بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا هما بادو أبدا سيسترز we talk about leadership and we talk about Rasulullah sallallahu as our leader i remind myself and you to remember that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is always our leader sometimes people feel and think that in those days Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the leader today i am the leader no Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is always our leader we don't supplant him we are never in his place the problem happens when we imagine that we are in the place of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are never in his place we only follow his leadership the wisdom referred to in the quran means leadership so the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wal hikwa in the ayah where he said laqad manna allah ala almu'minina iz ba'atha fihim rasulan min anfusihim yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al kitab wal hikma وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ذَلَالٍ مُبِينَ Allah said, He gave these four things, Tilawat al-Qur'an, Tazkiyat al-Nafs wa Tarbiyat al-Akhlaq, Ta'alim al-Qur'an, wa Hikmah. This Hikmah is the leadership. It is the wisdom of doing something. So we only follow his leadership. The wisdom referred to in the Qur'an means leadership. So you don't say, that was him, then it was him, and today it's me. Also don't say, that he had divine guidance, and I do not have divine guidance. so i can never lead the way he used to lead that is true in terms of content but in terms of the leadership itself we also have divine guidance which is the divine guidance that he had which he taught us that is the importance of the sunna so this when we say the sunna we are talking about divine guidance and this divine guidance is not coming to us as wahi this divine guidance comes to us as the sunna of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so we need to appreciate it for what it is the truth is that it was him then and it is him today we only follow um so <clears throat> that is why sunnah is so important it's not only about following it out of love for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but because that is the only way so this is something that we need to keep in mind uh that we follow the sunna not only because of our devotion to him and so on all of which is true and it should be there uh but we follow the sunna because that is not only the best way that is the only way if you really want to succeed then there is no other way of success other than the sunna of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um now if you see uh, when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you see his life take the Madi- the the makkan period and the madin madinan period you will see that there are uh, the the opposition to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was different in makka and it was different in madina the opposition of the quraish was theological was in the context of saying we worship so many gods how can we worship only one god and so on the opposition of the munafiqun in madina on the other hand was political they accepted islam publicly and they prayed behind rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the masjid but in secret they opposed him and they plotted and planned against him they didn't plot and plan to deny allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship idols they plotted and planned against his leadership if he had desired, declared himself to be a priest without any temporal goals or interest without any worldly goals or interest they would have supported him all heartedly they opposed him because he said that in islam He said that Islam is not only for the masjid, but also in every space, in the public space, in private space, in commerce, in business, in military, in government, in family, in education, in leisure, uh, in everywhere and everything else. There is Islam. Islam has something to say about that. Islam has certain rules and boundaries about that. There is no space or activity or state of being or life that Islam has nothing to say about. That is what they opposed. Now take a breath here and see what our own problems today are in this respect. Why do people have a problem with the Sunnah? Muslims don't have a problem with Salah or fasting or Umrah or Hajj. We have Ramadan Muslims and we have Eid Salah Muslims and we have Jumaah Muslims and we and Umrah is a nice holiday to take every year and the ideal honeymoon. The problem is with backbiting and slander 
with dealing unjust, be, be dealing uh, justly with inheritance and sharing it with our sisters, with being truthful in transactions, with dealing in interest-based transactions, with eating zabiha, with smoking and smoking and drugs and gambling, both doing these things and facilitating them for others by selling them and making money from that. Now, this is where the problems are. Now, I can add to this list, but I will leave you to do that. This is our problem and this is what we must change. If we want to succeed in this life and the next, it is not only about praying, it's about what the prayer is supposed to achieve, which is tanha anil fashayul munkar. If we are praying and we are, lives are still full of fahushat and munkarat, then we have to ask, what is my salah doing? Is my salah worth what it's supposed to be doing? Now, it's interesting to note that Rasulullah <coughs> had these two different uh, kinds of um, challenges. And the challenge, therefore, in Makkah was to get the disbeliever to believe, while the challenge in Madina was to get the believer to believe completely and practice that belief in all aspects of his life. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Ya yu al-lazina amanu aminu billahi wa rasuli. Ya yu al-lazina amanu udkhuru fi silmi kaafatan. As Allah said, Oh, you who believe, believe completely uh, in, the, in Allah and His Messenger. Oh, you who believe, enter into Islam completely. Now, all of these are things, uh, ayat which came for the Muslims. Interestingly, the punishment, therefore, of the munafiqeen is far more severe than that on the mushrikeen of Makkah. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the punishment for the hypocrites is far more severe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this famous ayah where Allah said, I will not forgive even if they. Uh, even if uh, you seek forgiveness for them uh, 70 times. And Nabi Sallallahu was given this uh, thing to say, Allah is saying, I will not forgive these people even if you ask me to forgive them 70 times. Now think about that. This is the uh, Nabi Alayhi Salaam who is being told that uh, Allah is so upset with these people that Allah will not even accept the dua of the Rasul not just not accept the dua, but even if the dua is made 70 times, Allah says, I will still not forgive them. So the punishment is far more severe uh, than the punishment on the mushriki in Makkah. Now it shows us the importance of following Islam totally and not selectively. I think this is where we have to keep on asking ourselves and reminding ourselves that Islam is a complete way of life, right? It's a deen, it's not just a madhab, it's not just something which <clears throat> came for us to uh, do some things which, uh, you know, most of the time we like to do them anyway. So we say, okay, fine, I'll let me do this in the name of Islam. It is not for that. It is. It came as a matter of such great sincerity uh, and such great importance <clears throat> that we have been told this is the deen, this is the only way. Uh, we were told that this is something which on the Day of Judgment, nothing other than this would be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, it is something which we must Treat with that kind of uh, respect and that kind of uh, devotion and ensure that we follow it completely and totally. Uh, that is the whole uh, you know, idea and purpose of, uh, of the coming of Islam. So I remember, I remind myself and you, let us really ask ourselves what it is that we are doing and what it is that we need to uh, do more so that we can bring about these changes in our lives. The whole idea of this is that I need to change my life, right? If I cannot change my life, then the purpose of Islam, the purpose of the coming of Islam is not served. I remind myself and you, let us look at our lives, let us uh, check what we are doing, see the, 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 uh, see the action and see what consequences this action is likely to have for me in this dunya and the akhirah. Every action has two kinds of consequences. There is a consequence of the action in the dunya, and there is a consequence of the action in the akhirah. If I smile at you, at, at somebody, then the consequence in this dunya is that I appear friendly, I make friends, it's good for my relationships, and the consequence in the, of the uh, action of smiling in akhirah is that it is written down for me as an action of sadaqah. So everything has Two consequences. There's a good consequences in the dunya and there's a consequence in the akhirah. If I do ghibah, then I am degrading myself in this dunya. 
I am also showing to people that I am untrustworthy because I am carrying these tales and backbiting people and bad talking people. And in the Akhira, my good deeds get transferred to the account of the person whose ghibat I made. Right? So there is a consequence in the dunya and there is a consequence in the Akhira. So let us look at our lives, examine them and see what is it that I am doing and what are the consequences of those actions in the dunya and the Akhira and make sure that we do not do anything which can cause trouble for us in the dunya or the akhirah. Wa sallallahu ala nabil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahmatullahi.